Clark Devon Hardware presents Changing a Rim Cylinder on a Jimmy Proof Deadbolt. You'll note that we're demonstrating on a mock up display and not a real door. When performing this operation at home, you'll have the door open for most of the operation so that you can hold the cylinder in place while you loosen and tighten the cylinder screws. You'll need a few tools a linesman's plier, a slotted and a Phillips screwdriver would be recommended, along with two slip joint pliers. You may also want a hacksaw handy. Before removing the cylinder and lock, make sure the lock and key are operating properly. If they're not, stop and give us a call before you move forward. Your lock is held in place by screws which can be easily removed with one of your screwdrivers. If you have one-way screws holding your lock, you'll need a one-way screw remover. You can get that from the hardware store. Remove the four screws holding the lock to the door to reveal the back plate. The back plate will have two screws through it holding the cylinder. Remove the two screws holding the cylinder and remove the back plate. On the outside of the door, be prepared to catch the old cylinder and collar as they fall. At a minimum, Bring in the old cylinder and screws to the store when you purchase your new rim cylinder. The tail of your old cylinder will either be oriented vertical or horizontal. The tail of your new cylinder will need to be oriented the same as the old cylinder before installation. If you need assistance with this procedure, please ask the clerk at the lock counter. The new cylinder you'll purchase will come with a collar, a cylinder, two screws, and a back plate. The new cylinder's tail will need to be cut so that the overall length of the new cylinder and tail are the same as the old cylinder. Set the new and old cylinders on a flat level surface. Using the old cylinder for reference, mark the tail of the new cylinder to indicate where you'll make the cut. If your mark is on or near one of the perforations on the tail, you can use your slip joint pliers to make the break. You could also make the cut with a linesman's pliers or a hacksaw. The new cylinder screws must be cut to the correct length as well. If you can make these cuts on the cut line provided on the screw, go ahead and make the cuts with your hacksaw or linesman's pliers. If they need to be cut on the thread, you may want to bring them in and have our machine shop make that cut. If you're not sure, ask a lock counter associate. Now that your new cylinder tail and screws have been cut to size, you can put your lock back together. Orient your cylinder correctly. The keyhole and tail should be towards the floor. Take the collar, slip it over the cylinder, and place it in the outside of the door, ensuring your orientation is correct. You can either reuse the plate you had before, as we're doing here, or you can use the new back plate, which may be more forgiving when realigning the lock during reassembly. Replace the cylinder screws.
and realign the back plate. Once the back plate's in position, you can tighten down the screws for the back plate. Once the back plate is on, put the lock back in place. Push in and hold the shutter guard as you place the lock back into place over the back plate. Make sure the tailpiece goes into the hole in slot in the back of the lock. Hold the lock in place and work the lock to ensure proper placement. Once you have the lock in place, put two screws back into the lock and work the lock to make sure it works correctly. When you've found the proper adjustment, put the last two screws in. Note that over tightening the screws on the lock can cause misalignment. If this happens, back off the screws slightly. And last, check the lock and key to make sure everything's working properly. If you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact Clark Devon Hardware's lock department. When it's time for hardware, it's Clark Devon Hardware.